I'm Claire Agata from Scopism. In this video, we're going to take a look at service integration and management, also referred to as SIAM. What is it and why is it important? SIAM is a way of applying service management principles to environments where lots of different teams are involved in service design and delivery. Some of these teams may be internal and some may be external or third party suppliers. SIAM helps to make sure that organisations get the value they wanted when they're commissioned a service. If you work in service management, you'll be familiar with concepts like incident management, change management. SIAM is a way to apply these across a multi-provider environment. As more and more organisations outsource elements of service delivery, SIAM becomes absolutely critical. It focuses on end-to-end -end value and identifying all of the service providers that support that value. SIAM helps service providers to understand where they fit into the big picture and how they contribute to business outcomes. The formal definition of SIAM says that it is a management methodology that can be applied in an environment that includes services sourced from a number of different providers. So SIAM has a different level of focus to traditional multi-sourced ecosystems where there is one customer and multiple suppliers. SIAM provides governance, management, integration, assurance and coordination to ensure that the customer organisation gets maximum value from its service providers. You can read more about this in the SIAM Foundation Body of Knowledge and that's available as a free download from scopism.com. Imagine this scenario. You're accountable for a critical business system. Let's use the account system as an example. You get a phone call in the middle of the night to say, no one can send or receive any payments. Business processes are failing, the consequences could be huge. No problem. You call your supplier for the application. That should fix things, but they deny all knowledge of an issue. It must, they suggest, be an infrastructure problem. So you call the infrastructure team on their out of hours number. Not us, they say. Have you tried the security team? We know they were doing some patching last night. The clock is ticking and you're getting nowhere fast. You might need to imagine this scenario or it might be one that you've already experienced during your career. Businesses are more and more reliant on digital services and those services are more and more likely to be provided by a complex network of service providers. Think about how different things could be. In a SIAM model, this type of incident would be dealt with collaboratively across all of your service providers with everyone focused on end-to-end -end service delivery rather than their own contractual targets. This means you get the outcomes that you need much more quickly. And of course, this is just the start of what SIAM can do. Many organisations start from this reactive position, using SIAM to bring some cooperation to their service delivery. But in the longer term, building a collaborative culture across your ecosystem has huge benefits, leading to innovation and improvement. The SIAM body of knowledge says that SIAM introduces the concept of a service integrator, which is a single logical entity held accountable for the end-to-end -end delivery of services and the business value that the customer receives. The SIAM ecosystem has three layers within it, the customer organisation, the service integrator and the service providers, which can be internal, external or a mixture of both. Many customer organisations spend huge amounts of time carrying out individual supplier reviews, performance meetings, right across the supply chain. Introducing the service integrator role shifts the focus to value and end-to-end -end service management. SIAM is typically adopted in larger organisations, but it's actually for any type and size of organisation. The principles and practices remain the same, although the roles and resources required may be more or less. There are many, many benefits to be gained by adopting a SIAM approach. They include things like improved service quality, optimised costs and increased value, improved governance, a scalable, flexible supply network that can grow and shrink as you do. Some of the very first organisations who adopted SIAM used it to support them as they moved from a single, monolithic outsource contract to work with a range of specialist outsourcers. They knew they were getting par value for money from their existing contract, but they also needed to be sure that they would be able to get value from the new environment. 
Adopting SIAM is a significant organisational transformation. There will be challenges along the way, and these can include building the business case to actually begin the work, culture change and organisational change management, as with any large project, commercial challenges and existing contracts, and automation and tooling to underpin your SIAM model. We also need to consider how does SIAM and IT service management fit together? So there's often some confusion about how SIAM and IT service management interact. Does SIAM replace, for example, existing processes and procedures? The answer here is no. Many SIAM models are built on processes that you would be very familiar with, including incident and change management. It's easy to think of SIAM as building on and extending these processes, adapting them for the multi-supplier environment. For example, we might know how to do incident management, but do we know what to do when that incident spans 15 different service providers? This is where SIAM can help. And of course, SIAM isn't just for IT. We can extend the scope of SIAM across the enterprise, incorporating areas such as HR, logistics and facilities. Think about your joiners and leavers process for an example. The Service Integrator provides governance, management, integration, assurance and coordination. But what does that actually mean? A huge amount of the Service Integrator's role is about building the culture of collaboration and communication between all of the different service providers in an environment. This can include getting external service providers to work together even though they're actually competitors. And it can also mean working with internal service providers who've never been managed in this way before. It can be a real challenge. Another question I'm asked quite frequently is, isn't this just supplier management? How is SIAM different to supplier management? And many people wonder about the difference between SIAM and these traditional supplier management activities. So it's a good question to ask. Supplier management typically revolves around a one-to-one -one relationship between the customer and the supplier. There will be regular reviews and the supplier will be held accountable for the targets in its contract. With a lot of suppliers, there's a lot of reviews to do. Siam takes a different focus and creates a one-to-many approach. Rather than managing each supplier in a silo and having them focus narrowly on their own targets, Siam instead encourages all the suppliers to work together in a cooperative way. If one supplier has an issue, could another one help? Could collaboration lead to new services or innovation? After you've watched this, if you'd like to know where you can learn more, you'll find a lot of information on the Scopism website. You'll have free access to the Scion body of knowledge and the Scion white papers that give an indication of the global state of Scion. You can also join the Scion community and share your thoughts and feedback. We'd love to hear from you.